I was supposed to take the C500 Mark II onto several different projects in France and create some amazing content with it. Unfortunately, all of this got cancelled last minute. 2020, am I right? But since I already had the camera as a loner and I didn't want it to just collect dust here in Vienna, I decided to just take it out last minute really spontaneously and find a model to shoot with. And Diana was actually so kind to come last minute and it was so last minute that she came directly from work and didn't even have time to bring several different outfits. So keep that in mind when we're talking about today's behind the scenes when I was using the C500 Mark II to shoot a test model video. And since after posting the screen grabs all over the internet, a lot of you guys asked for which lenses we used, how did it pair with the Crane 3S, I decided to do a small behind the scenes, so more of this after the intro. So typically on these kind of model fashion shoots, we choose our location according to the model's outfits. But since we only had one, we decided to stay in one location pretty much anyway. The majority of the shoot was actually shot handheld on a C500 Mark II and I used the simple rig that I usually use on my C300 Mark III as well. I'm looking forward to actually rigging this camera out a little bit bigger, but I haven't really found a cage that I like yet, so I'm still waiting for some of my favorite brands to come out with a new cage or at least a top plate that is really simple but also fits the need for my rigging. So what I did here is I used a small rig NATO rail and attached it to the top of my camera and on that I used a small rig top handle as well. To the front of the top handle I attached a small rig monitor mount with an ARRI location pin. And the monitor I used for this shoot is the OCG7 7 inch 3000 nit brightness monitor. And I really like this monitor and I already did a review on this and I think it pairs really nicely with the C500 Mark II or the C300 Mark III. The 3000 nits of brightness as well as the 7 inch size allows me to pull focus manually in all kinds of weather situations, may it be sunrise, sunset or even in bright daylight. It also has an SDI in and out so I can use it with an SDI cable which I really like and prefer especially when doing gimbal work. Other than that I just kept it simple with the original side grip and that's pretty much it. For all of my handheld shots, I only used the 24-70 2.8 as well as the 16-35 2.8 by Canon. And between these two lenses, you can get amazing shots out of the C500 Mark II and those are the lenses that I use the most, especially when shooting handheld. Considering the C500 Mark II has a full frame sensor, you can get really nice wide angle shots with the 16mm on the 16-35. But you can also get fairly close with the 24-70 when extending it all the way to 70mm. For my next set, I really wanted to get some smooth gimbal shots and I haven't rigged the C500 Mark II or the C300 Mark III to any gimbal before that. Neither did I use the Crane 3S before so this was a perfect opportunity to actually see if that combo works. As for our gimbal setup I used the 24mm 1.4 Okay, so recording this video I actually kind of messed up because I never used the 24mm 1.4 in that shoot and that was a different shoot entirely. What I did on this shoot is I used the 16-35 and tried balancing this on a Crane 3S. But since this was the first time I ever used a Crane 3S, I hoped it worked but it actually didn't because I didn't have enough clearance on the back of the gimbal to accommodate for such a big lens. Because I didn't swap out the back of the gimbal for the bigger extension plate which actually made this setup possible and I talked about this in my Crane 3S review but for this shoot I really didn't have enough space to accommodate for this big lens and I ran into issues when going under slung and the whole experiences of using the Crane 3S was really not enjoyable and after a short amount of shooting I actually ditched the crane completely and went handheld again. That isn't to say that the Crane 3S isn't a good fit for the C500 Mark II or the C300 Mark III but with the 16-35 2.8 and without the extension plate it definitely wasn't enough space to work with so keep that in mind when you want to try out that combo you need to use the extension plate. 
I also switched out my OCG7 for the Fieldbird LUT 6S because it's just way smaller and it also features an SDI in, so I could actually use this as a gimbal monitor. It's also really nice and bright and I just did a review about that as well. I also ran into some problems with keeping Diana in focus when just using the autofocus. And the whole experience of using the Crane 3S with the C500 Mark II on that particular shoot really wasn't satisfactory. So since I couldn't really pull manual focus on the crane at this point, I decided to ditch the crane altogether and just shoot handheld for the rest of the night. I really love shooting backlit and this is what I did for the majority of the time, especially when the sun was setting. And the C500 Mark II really struggled to find focus when the sun was setting behind her. So I switched over to shooting manual focus the entire time. And I was a little disappointed by the autofocus capabilities of the C500 Mark II when it came to a really harsh environment with the sun setting behind her. And comparing this to my EOS R5, for example, the R5 has absolutely no problem of finding focus in the most difficult of situations. So I was a little disappointed by the autofocus capabilities of the C500 Mark II on the gimbal as well as in these backlit situations. I really did love our location though and the sun was setting in a perfect place for us to actually shoot in. We had this abandoned rooftop kind of vibe with these abandoned buildings in the background and I think this really fit the vibe perfectly. Then eventually when the sun actually has set and we came into the twilight phase, I decided to just use her as a silhouette and I think those shots turned out really nicely. Let's talk shooting modes and frame rates. I shot the entire video in 6K raw 50 frames because I really wanted to see what the camera is capable of when shooting in its highest resolution in raw. I also wanted to be able to slow down most of the shots if I wanted to, so that's why I kept the frame rate at 50 frames. So after the sun was gone, we had enough shots to actually make a little one to two minute montage. So we wrapped it up and I brought all the footage back home and actually started post-production. When it comes to our music choice, we used Epidemic Sound and I really like using Epidemic Sound for these kind of model fashion shoots because they have a vast variety of songs with actual vocals and I think the songs that they do have with vocals are one of the best out there right now. So if you're interested in Epidemic Sound, I link them in the description below and you can get one month for free if you sign up through our link. And now let's talk about my favorite part when it comes to editing and that is color grading. And here I was a little bit disappointed by the Canon C500 Mark II but in a good way. As I've already mentioned, I shot everything in RAW and I used C-Log2 with Cinema Gamut for the most dynamic range to actually process my video. Then in post, I used the conversion LUT from C-Log2 to Rec. 709 that you can download on the Canon website, especially made for the C500 Mark II. And that LUT is absolutely amazing and it does most of the work for you. And to be totally honest with you, after that I just used one of our LUTs from our cinema LUT pack. I think it was the hipster LUT, I just put on top of the footage and dialed it down to about 30-35%. And if you do want to check out our LUT packs, they're in the description below and they're currently on sale because we recently hit 20,000 subscribers, but the sale is ending pretty soon, so you need to hurry up. So after putting on that LUT, I only changed the U from blue to a little bit more of a teal because I thought that was complementing the scene a little bit better. And after that, I just added a little bit of film grain. And the film grain I added with a plug in for Final Cut by Motion VFX, and it's called M Film Look. And there's also a link in the description to this plugin as well. And this plugin is really versatile, and you have a lot of options to actually modify your footage and make it more, well, let's say cinematic, because you can actually fake a little bit of an anamorphic look. But for this kind of video, I just wanted to add a little bit of film grain, and that's it. I think I even overdid the film grain on some shots because YouTube isn't handling film grain very well. So so keep that in mind when you want to upload it to YouTube that you should go easy on the film grain for most parts because I feel like it decreases the quality some of the time. So there you have it. This was my little behind the scenes of the C500 Mark II and I hope you enjoyed it. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to use this camera for all of the jobs that we had planned, but I still got a fair grasp of what this camera is capable of. So we will also do a comparison to the C300 Mark III in the very near future. So if you're into that, that, subscribe and if you did like this video actually like the video and I hope to see you on the next one